welcome back from the break. Now it's time to get crafty. Crafty Agi has an amazing craft ahead of us. Let's check it out. Hi kids! Welcome to this week's episode of Let's Get Crafty. My name is Crafty Agi and I'm going to show you how to make a pom-pom jam. What you need for this project is of course wool. You can use any color. As you see, I have purple, blue, and navy blue. And then of course, a pom-pom maker, googly eyes, a pair of scissors, and glue stick. So this is a pom-pom maker. Just in case you don't have it, you can use cardboard. It's just about winding your yarn around it. So you'll see that there's nothing so special about it. So we begin with this side so what I want to do is just weave yarn around it and I want to try and make it very very thick so you can do this activity while watching something your favorite show on TV maybe ah I even have a very brilliant idea what I'll do I'll mix up the color of yarn I'll do purple on this side and then I'll do blue on the other end. Okay, I think this is good enough for me. So I clip it there with my pair of scissors and then I tuck it in like this. So this is what you have. Then I return it back there. And then I go to this other end. So which blue? Navy, sky. I pick sky. So sky matches with my pom pom maker. Oh, I didn't. I I hadn't realized that when I was picking sky blue. Promise. Then what I want to do is I want to tie our pom-pom from the center. So this is what you'll have to do in the case that you're using a pom-pom maker. You definitely have to do this. So, so my string will pass all the way through here, here, here. Then I tie it at the end here. But first what we have to do is cut this part, like this. So free it. <laughs> like that. So this is what you'll have. So now with our string, it will pass in between here. Like this. It's like tying your hair girls with a hairband. Girls, girls, not boys. <laughs> so like this. And then go over again twice. Then you make it very tight. Like that. And then of course, the best part of it all is when you get to dismantle your pom pom maker. So you begin, you just remove it from here. This part, they all come off, don't worry. They can come back together again. So you just start here. Or you can begin from this end. You can begin by loosening this side here, then this other side here. Then you pull this up, this side. Uh, using all my strength, like that. And then you do the same for this other end. So again, free up from this, and then from this other end, like that, and then of course this one will come off very, very easily. As you can see, they usually come back together quite easily. So this is our pom-pom. How nice, double color, pink and blue and with a navy blue center string. This is so cute. So what you want to do, you want to level make these strings uniform. So I just go around nipping off any, any of the strings that 
uh, shooting up from the rest of the bunch. So like this. Then now we have very neat and cute pom-pom, very fluffy, big enough. <laughs> big enough to teach us about jams, because jams are invisible anyway. So cut this off. So the very, very, very last part is this. We want to fix eyes onto our jam, <laughs> make it more real. Of course, we know that jams don't actually have eyes, eyes, but we just want to have a little fun with our craft. So what I want to do is pick different sized googly eyes and I want them to go right here. So this ones, they can peel off. So you can decide to actually remove the sticker behind here. Let's see if you have nails. I have short nails. I keep my nails very short because I don't like jams as well. I don't like covering jams inside of my nails. Long nails do that. So I'd encourage you to always keep your nails very short. So this one will go here. And then, so this is why I have the glue stick, just so that you can stick in case your googly eyes or if you have to do the whole cutting out white paper and drawing the the black eyelids onto your white paper, then sticking the, the eyes onto your pom-pom. That's why you you'll definitely need glue. But here, I just need to peel off and stick. So, here we go, presenting our pom-pom jam. Thank you so much, my friends, for tuning in. I had so much fun making this pom-pom jam. I hope that you can use it as one of the props when you're getting to learn about jams in any of the science lessons. See you all next time. Bye! Watoto Shambani is up next. Enjoy some farming time. Remember, you'll also have a quiz at the end, so pay attention. Enjoy! Hi. Hi. Welcome to Urban Smart Gardeners. So, who has a question? Why are you planting crops in town yet? You usually plant them in Ushago. So, the reason why we are farming in town and not in Ushago is because there is something called urban farming. What is it called? Urban farming. And what is urban farming? It means growing crops in urban areas so that people can have food while they are still living in town. Okay? So the reason why you're seeing the white pipes whereby the plants are being grown is because, you see in towns we don't have a lot of land like in Shabu. You see everywhere there's a building, a big building everywhere. So you need, to, you need somewhere where your plants are going to grow. And there's an alternative you can have and that is the pipes. So the pipes, they act like the ground because it is very small in towns. So you have to find a way to have your ground and the one way you can do that is by having pipes and you can even place them as they are going up so that your shamba becomes big but not on the ground but going up. Okay? Where will these pipes be put? So the pipes which you're seeing over there, you can put them on a stand. You can make for them a stand made out of timber. You can make for them a stand out of uh, metal and then you're going to arrange them so that they can go as high as possible. And you see, because you're going high, you're going to have many, many plants. And that means you can have so many vegetables to feed mom, dad, and your small sister. Cynthia, these small plants are called seedlings. They are called what? Seedlings. Good. And they are used to plant crops in our pipes. Okay? Yes. How do you put these plants inside the pipes? So, normally there's something called transplanting. And transplanting means take a seedling that has been grown on the tree or on a seedbed and then you go and plant it inside the container which you have on the ground. So the process is called what? Transplanting. Now 
that you have known what is urban farming, we are going to do what? Transplant. We are going to transplant our seedlings, okay? Yes. So we go with our chair, we go to the shamba, okay? Ah, yeah, you follow me? Come, 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 come. So, what are we doing? Transplanting. So, we have our seedlings. This is a seedling for? Managu. Managu. And you're going to transplant it in our garden, right? It's good. So, we're going to make a hole. Then we have our seedling. We put it inside the hole. And then you cover with the soil. And you farm around it, okay? Yes. Good. And then water is going to come into the system, okay? Yes. Good. So, who is going to transplant? Good. So everyone to pick a seedling. Who is ready to transplant? Me. me? You are ready to transplant. Nani hana seedling shika. Na hause mi. Hmm? Ivy. Na usi haribu. Na usi yake mkono kwa mdomo na mabua na kuwana. Ili hivyo. So. Now we are going to do what? Transplant. And how are we going to do the transplanting? To dig a hole. Yes. The seedling inside, then you farm around it. Good, so we do that. Yes. Everyone to transplant in a hole. Hi. Make sure you farm around. Yes. And then you mark where you've planted, okay? Yes. So that you take your nichio ni ambi mboga angu iko happy, sindi yo. to be ready in how many weeks? Four, four weeks. weeks. Good. So we wait for four weeks and you're going to eat? Managu. Good. Skuma wiki. And Swiss, Swiss chard. Okay? Yes. Good. When I want plant, when I want to plant, I want to plant, I want to When I want to transplant, I dig a hole with my fingers. I place the seedling inside. I farm around it, and in four weeks, the seedling will be ready. It will now be a full-grown grown plant. Nataka kupanda skuma wiki, na ingisha, na chima shimo, na ingisha, na funika, neka karand. Takua ready after four weeks. Kuma. Today we have learned how to plant a seedling. What can you remember? On today's pop quiz, name three steps of planting a seedling. Name three steps of planting a seedling. Remember to start with your name, the name of your school, followed by the answers. Thank you for watching today's episode of Watoto Shambani. See you next week! Next is our amazing world. Let's learn something new about our world.
Hello and welcome to Our Amazing World, the show where we visit wonders of the world and learn interesting facts about them. China is known for a lot of things like the Grand Canal, Lushan National Park, Mausoleum of the Qin Emperor, and the longest man-made structure in the world, the Great Wall. Named one of the seven wonders of the world and recognized as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1987, the Great Wall of China was built to protect the northern border against China's biggest enemies, the Mongols. Contrary to popular belief, it is not a single wall, but a series of disjointed walls consisting of side, circular, and parallel walls. As a wall built for military defense, it had over 7,000 lookout towers, as well as beacon towers to send signals and block houses to house soldiers. Some towns were even built along the wall to house soldiers so they could quickly get to it in case of an attack. The height and width of the wall varies over its length. It averages around 33 feet tall and 15 feet and extends over different types of terrain, even into mountains. Its highest point is over 5,000 feet above sea level. Its official length is 8,851.8 kilometers. However, the total length of the Great Wall, built over thousands of years, is estimated at 21,000 196 kilometers and spreads over 15 regions and nine provinces and municipalities of China. The construction of the Great Wall took over 2,000 years with different dynasties destroying, rebuilding, repairing and expanding it. The Ming Dynasty built the most visible and popular sections of the Great Wall. Many people died in the building of the wall, such that some term it the longest cemetery on Earth. Archaeologists have found some human remains under parts of the wall, as some people who died were buried right under it. Some authors even estimate that over 1 million people died building the wall during the Qing Dynasty alone. The wall also has myths associated with it, the most common being that it can be seen from space with the naked eye. Many people still believe it. We're taking a brief commercial break, but we'll be right back here at the Southfield Mall with a new and interesting career. As always, keep it clap, keep vocal! 